You wake up and immediately everything feels wrong. There's no bed, no floor, no sky. Just everything, everywhere. And none of it cares about you. You reach out, but your hand grabs nothing. Literally, nothing. Not air, not light, not even regret. Congratulations. You've fallen into space. Not the cinematic kind with astronauts high-fiving in slow motion. The real kind. The one that hums with radiation, smells like burnt metal, and would kill you faster than an unpaid rent notice. Let's find out how deep this thing really goes. People think space starts once you leave the atmosphere. Wrong. That's basically Earth's attic. Some dust, a few old satellites, and Jeff Bezos flying laps. No, we're going deeper, past the point where sunlight fades, warmth dies, and physics starts writing apology notes. Strap in. You're about to fall through reality's basement. Level 1. The Solar System. You start near the sun, the overworked light bulb keeping your species alive. Around it spins the familiar chaos. Eight planets, billions of rocks, and one very offended former planet, Pluto. You float past Mercury, a toasted marble that never learned sunscreen. Venus, Earth's evil twin, currently on fire, and then Earth, blue, fragile, and loudly pretending it has its life together. Further out, Mars sulks in red dust. Jupiter flexes its storms. Saturn shows off its jewelry like it's still prom queen. And beyond that, the Kuiper Belt, frozen rubble and forgotten dreams. Then comes the Oort Cloud, the solar system's outer fence, trillions of icy bodies drifting for billions of years, the leftovers from creation. Beyond it, sunlight is just a rumor. Here ends home. You've officially stepped off the map. Level 2. The Stellar Neighborhood Welcome to interstellar space, the cosmic suburbs. A few dozen stars live here, socially distancing by light years. You drift past Alpha Centauri, Proxima B, and some random red dwarfs that look cute until they vaporize you with flares. Even the sun looks like a dot, one star among hundreds of billions. It's quiet here, too quiet. Radiation hums through your skull like bad elevator music. You're surrounded by more emptiness than your inbox after posting a controversial tweet. If you could drive to the next star at highway speed, it would take 50 million years. So go ahead, pack snacks. You'll be dead for all of it, but snacks are snacks. This is where space stops being a backdrop and starts being an endless wilderness. Level 3, the Milky Way. Zoom out and suddenly you're seeing everything. A spiral disk of light, elegant ancient and absolutely enormous. 400 billion stars, all spinning around a central, supermassive black hole named Sagittarius A-star. He's basically the galactic landlord, pulling rent from anything with mass. You're located in the Orion Arm, one of the smaller branches. Not even a main arm, just a side street of cosmic real estate. If galaxies were cities, you'd be living behind a gas station. Each rotation of the galaxy takes 230 million years. Meaning, last time your solar system was in this position, dinosaurs were still paying taxes. It's humbling and deeply insulting. You're one pixel in a trillion, circling nowhere special. Level 4. The Local Group Zoom out again, and the Milky Way shrinks into one glittering frisbee among 80 others. The Local Group, a cosmic family gathering where everyone's awkward and hungry. The big sibling, Andromeda, is two and a half million light years away and moving in fast. In four billion years, you'll collide, a galactic car crash in slow motion, billions of stars flung around like glitter at a funeral. Tiny dwarf galaxies orbit nearby like nosy cousins, some already half eaten by gravity, others waiting their turn. Here, galaxies behave less like majestic spirals and more like black holes food prep. They consume each other, merge and explode. Space isn't peaceful. It's an all-you-can-eat buffet with no closing hours. You're not even halfway down yet. Feeling small? Good. You'll need that humility where we're going. Level 5, the cosmic web. Now it gets abstract. The universe stops looking like stars and starts looking like a brain. A massive neural network made of galaxies, connected by filaments of dark matter. You're inside Laniakea supercluster, a gravitational metropolis containing hundreds of thousands of galaxies, all glued together by invisible forces. Zoom out further, and those filaments weave into a 3D spiderweb. The bright threads are galaxies, the dark gaps are voids, 
cosmic holes so empty that they make loneliness feel crowded. You drift into one. There's nothing. No light. No warmth. Not even particles. It's the universe's version of airplane mode. Every second here feels infinite. Every thought echoes back at you, asking why you ever thought space was cool. Level 6. The Observable Universe. Okay, time for the big reveal. Everything you can see, every galaxy, every particle of light, is trapped inside this bubble. The observable universe, 93 billion light years wide. You're not looking out, you're looking back. Each photon a timestamp. The farther you look, the older the light. The faint microwave glow wrapping around you, that's the afterglow of the Big Bang. Cosmic baby pictures taken 13.8 billion years ago. It's only 2.7 Kelvin, barely warmer than absolute zero. The leftover breath of creation, stretched thin by time and cosmic expansion. Beyond that, expansion itself outruns light. Anything farther is moving away faster than the universe can gossip about it. You could travel forever and never reach an edge, because the universe doesn't have one. It just keeps making more middle. Here, deep stops meaning distance. It means futility. Level 7, beyond the horizon. You fall one last time, but now falling doesn't even mean moving. There's no direction left, no light, no physics that still returns your calls. Beyond the cosmic horizon, light can never reach you. Time itself stretches until seconds are centuries. Galaxies drift apart until even gravity gives up. Welcome to the heat death, the universe's final retirement plan. Every star has burned out, every atom too cold to move. Black holes have evaporated into dust. It's just a thin soup of lonely photons coasting through infinite night. It's not dramatic. There's no explosion, just quiet surrender. The universe sighing after a 14 billion year workday. And you, you're still falling. Not down, just away. You look back. Not that back means anything anymore. Every level you passed is gone. The sun, the earth, the galaxies, erased by distance and entropy. You wanted to see how deep space really goes. Turns out it goes until meaning runs out. You can't even die here. Death requires change, and change gave up millennia ago. The final truth of deep space isn't violence. It's apathy. Funny thing about infinity, it's not about size. It's about how small it makes you feel. People think the universe is vast because it's full of stars. Wrong. It's vast because it doesn't care if there are any. You thought you were exploring. You were just watching the universe turn itself inside out. From light to dust to silence. And in the grandest punchline of all, you'll never know how it ends. Because by the time it does, there won't be a you left to find out. Then, a flicker. Your eyes open. There's your ceiling. Your bed. Your phone buzzing. You stare at its glow. A miniature star lighting up your tiny world. You've come back from nothing, and suddenly the distance between you and everything else feels smaller. So, how deep does space really go? Far enough to make you appreciate having an up, a down, and somewhere to stand in between.